It's a pleasure for me to, to organize this section, geometric section, which may be the biggest one in all the sections. So uh, in this section, the first speaker would be uh, Wai Dun Sang from Lehigh University. He will speak about stability of shrinking rich solitons. Thank you. Okay, bon dia. Uh, I learned one sentence today, uh, so I'll try. Uh, as the moito content for uh, esta aquí. So I don't know how, whether you, it's understandable or not, but it's a great pleasure to be here, and thanks to the organizer uh, for the invitation and speak at this uh, uh, big occasion. So uh, today I'll talk about uh, uh, one type of rich isolatons, that shrinking rich isolaton, which is uh, a kind of uh, singularity model uh, for the rich flow. And um, so I will be, after uh, overview, I'll talk about this uh, part uh, of stability. Uh, so here's the plan that I will be talk about Ricci solitons and the brief relation with singularity formations in the Ricci flow. Uh, then I'll give a brief outline of what we know about the geometry of such shrinking solitons. And then in the final part, which is the main part, I'll talk about this variation of structures, in particular the second variation and stability. So let's start uh, with the first part, the Ricci solitons and uh, uh, as singularity models in the Ricci flow. So uh, the Ricci flow, of course, by now it's well known, introduced by Richard Hamilton in early 80s. Uh, that is uh, 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 second order weekly parabolic equation system, actually. And like the heat equations, uh, in this case, except it deforms the metrics on a remaining manifold. And of course, uh, after nearly after more than 30 years, it has become uh, one of the most powerful geometric tools uh, to study geometry and topology, including, of course, as it well known by the proof of Pancre conjecture and geometrization and also in geometry, the uh, long-time open problem of quarter pinch uh, that is more recent by Simon Brander and Rick Shun. Um, so one important part is study formation of singularities. And uh, so let's uh, see what the, do we mean by a singularity of the Ricci flow. So here we'll look at uh, uh, a solution to the Ricci flow uncertain time interval, uh, and suppose either you have existence, uh, uh, let's see, so finite time. So either the solution can go on forever to t equal to infinite, or sometimes for a finite part, finite time t, it has to become singular. That is when curvature blows up. So we'll see that as sphere shrinks to point in finite time, curvature becomes infinite. So that is, so we are looking at the finite time blow up. So uh, the existence will be, t will be finite, and the curvature as the t time t approach the blow up time will become infinite. And if we look at the, a compact manifold, so suppose manifold is com uh, actually as well as finite time, then you have two types of behavior, how, depends on how fast the curvature blows up. So uh, if t is equal to infinite, you would have to add a third type. But in finite time case, only two types as uh, uh, divided by Hamilton, who classified in two types. So the first type is the curvature blow up, blows up proportional to one over the time remaining, which is capital T minus little t. And that is typically was it's like sphere shrinks to point. Or otherwise, that's called a type two. Okay. So let's see what the, so typical examples, are. Uh, these are more like uh, uh, the very uh, easy 
case, behavior is self-similar solutions. Uh, so if we have an Einstein manifold to start with, then you just homothetically shrink him by, by a scaling, which is like the sphere, it just shrinks to a finite time, uh, to a point. So that is the, oh, I moved too fast. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I think I moved uh, very fast. Yeah. Uh, for example, when if it's not the Einstein, then the the first ex such example is the Hamilton's uh, very first paper in '82. Show if you have compact three manifold with positive Ricci curvature, then in finite time it develops a singularity, but curvature becomes more uniform and constant, so it will converges to uh, a round point in finite time, so when you do rescale, it converges to constant curvature matrix. So this is the, the well-known uh, theorem for the Ricci flow. Uh, and the other more uh, cases is the knack pinch, so uh, probably some of you have seen the pictures, if you have a neck, it will again shrink the sphere which uh, in the center and, and uh, form the neck pinch. Uh, and also you have degenerate neck pinch. So if you have two, uh, like the dumbbells, but one side is smaller than the other, and if you balance about just right, it will keep shrinking. Big ones shrink, small ones shrink, but will keep uh, until develop like a cusp type uh, singularity. But that turns out to be type two. So anyway, we have, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, this was supposed to be go down. So the, uh, so when curvature blows up, uh, typically it will be very shrink very fast. So the geometry is no more clear and we try to understand what happens when curvature blows up? What is the local structure? And uh, as in the OD, like in the minimal surface theory or harmonic map flow, uh, what we do is parabolic scaling in this case. So it's parabol parabolic version of dilation or blow up. And here is a schematic picture that you go to the place where the curvature blows up and you dilate to make a curvature equal to one and try to take a limit. So, yeah. Uh, so the, the limit in this case turns out to be at least in uh, the type one case, exactly turns out to be the shrinking soliton. So shrinking soliton appears as the uh, limit of this parabolic dilations uh, when curvature blows up. And that was especially, uh, that this is known when manifold is compact. So if you start with compact manifold and develop type one solution, uh, then you have uh, uh, the, the limit of dilations will be uh, a shrinking Ricci soliton, and that is the a result of a Natasha session. If the, the limit is compact uh, and uh, neighbor and uh, Anders Melatopin shows that if you start with compact, even the dilation limit is non-compact, that is still a shrinking rich soliton. So actually, the contribution of uh, these three is showing that it's a non-trivial one. The curvature is not flat. Okay, and the neighbor actually showed that you always can dilate to have a shrinking soliton, but it could be trivial. Okay, and briefly, if you have a type two solution, then you have to be required more. So Hamilton showed very early on that if curvature operator is non-active, then it is gradient uh, steady Ricci soliton. So if it's type two and the curvature is non-active, then it's gradient type two. So in the Type one case, there's no curvature requirement. So that's very nice. All right, so now that, uh, so what exactly is Ricci soliton? So the Ricci soliton here, uh, essentially it's a remaining manifold together with uh, a potential function. Here we'll be talking about gradient Ricci solitons. Uh, otherwise we'll be have vector field, which is gradient F. 
such that the Ricci curvature plus the Hessian of f, or in general, the derivative uh, of the metric is proportional to metric itself. And uh, of course, you can recognize this is very, look like uh, kind of similar to Einstein metric, which is indeed the case. So the three cases as the constant, like Einstein constant, we have steady shrinking and expanding. Steady is when rho equal to zero, like Ricci flat. The shrinking case is positive Ricci curvature corresponds, and, uh, and a row less than zero corresponds to negative Einstein constant. And F is what we call the potential function. So we have three types of uh, Ricci solitons, steady shrinking expanding. And uh, so correspond to three cases of Einstein metric. So now, the Ricci solitons are uh, similar to the mean curvature flow case. <laughs> you have self uh, or similar solutions here. Ricci solitons also appear as self similar solutions. And we mentioned the Einstein case before. So if you have Einstein metric to start with, then under the Ricci flow, it just have a skating factor different. Okay, so the shape doesn't change uh, essentially except the scaling. Now, if we have a Ricci soliton, then this it's also shrink or expand depends on the sign of rho. And what's uh, additional thing is just you have one parameter family of diffeomorphisms. So you have reparametrization here plus the scaling. And in Einstein case, of course, that's identity map, the vector field is trivial. Okay. And so we briefly uh, mentioned the significance of study Ricci solitons. First of all, it's a natural extension of Einstein manifolds. And uh, they correspond to self a similar solution to the Ricci flow. And then the, uh, like particularly in type one case, they are singular more singularity models. And we'll see later on that these also have a very geometric variational structures. So the Ricci solitons appear as critical points of uh, uh, the geometric functionals, particularly like uh, Paramount's lambda and the new entropy, who are discussed later. All right. Now, for the rest of the talk, we are concerned on one first type, which is shrinking case, corresponds to positive Einstein metrics. So here we have uh, Ricci plus Hessian of f equal to positive constant times the metric. So often we can normalize the constant to be a half by scaling. All right, so uh, for, uh, let's see a few, uh, the basic examples. So basic example, as we mentioned, it's kind of uh, when potential function is constant, that's a positive Einstein manifold. Uh, and also you can have flat metrics or even metrics of very different signs. So here, Gaussian shrinking soliton on Euclidean space, that's a flat standard Euclidean metric, but potential function is the Gaussian. So norm x squared over four, and you can verify the equations, reach equal to zero. The hash of f is one half delta ij, and of course that gives you the soliton equations. And you can make a product. So you can take any Einstein manifold, positive scalar curvature times uh, the Gaussian shrinking solitons. And that is again, uh, well, uh, like the cylinder. So will be again shrinking solitons. So you have these very uh, basic three type of examples. Now, we'd like to classify them or understand their geometry. So in low dimensions, two and three, uh, by now we have a complete understanding of it. So start two dimension uh, that Hamilton showed, if you have a two dimensional non-flat, so uh, exclude the Gaussian soliton, then what you have is the standard the round metric on the sphere, or you can take a finite quotient. In this case, it's only Z2, so that's the uh, real projection space. So the two-dimensional one is S2, RP2, or you have the Gaussian or its quotient. Uh, in three dimensions, uh, 
the early works of Hamilton and I.V. Pynchon, and then the major uh, work is by Paraman, and later on, uh, Ni and Wallach and uh, my two co-workers, Bing Longchen and Xi Ping Zhu, we were able to uh, complete uh, the picture uh, in the sense that the, now we know if you have a three-dimensional gradient shrinking Ricci solitons, then they are exactly belongs to the three types we mentioned. So either you have to be uh, Einstein, of course, three dimension, that is just space form, so it's a finite quotient of the sphere, or you have the Gaussian soliton, or the product, which is cylinder, S to cross R. So in three dimension, the previous three types are exactly uh, what uh, the shrinking solitons can be, and up to finite quotient. And uh, one major uh, work uh, start by Paraman is to show that if you have a non-compact 3D shrinking soliton, then the curvature cannot be strictly positive. And, and once you've done that, then that's, the, then that's finished the uh, uh, major step. Okay. So what about dimension higher? So if we want to study Ricci flow and study singularity formations, then uh, we will have to deal with the uh, shrinking solitons and other solitons. So the example, first of all, there are other examples, as we expect when dimension goes higher, things are not as simple. So in four dimension, turns out so far we know three examples in four dimension. And the two, the first two are the compact ones, and they live on Kähler manifolds. So the first one is Koizo and myself found in the uh, early 90s uh, that they are on CP2 blow up one point. So topologically, is CP2 connected, another copy of CP2 bar changes the complex orientation. That's what the minus is. And this one turns out to have positive Ricci curvature. And these are unitary symmetric, uh, rotate U2 uh, symmetry. So it's uh, reduced to nonlinear ODE. Uh, second example is the S1 cross S1 symmetry. And that lives on CP2 blow up two points, and those, these are the one so-called the Futake invariant is uh, non-zero, so you cannot have k lines matrix. Uh, and uh, so this one you have to solve a real uh, two-dimensional real uh, Mangiampe equation to prove existence. And then finally, third one is a non-compact example, uh, which is the, in algebra geometry called the tautological line bundle over uh, CP1, so it's uh, so it's uh, uh, the total space of such a uh, complex uh, line bundle. So it's uh, non-compact. Again, it's U2 symmetry, so again, reduced to ODE. And this by Feldman, uh, Yeoneman, and Knopf, so FIK examples. And then if you go on to high dimension, you have these extensions, and also by Denser and one uh, that they construct more uh, uh, examples of this type, but Instead of uh, CPN, you can take k Einstein metrics and take products of them. So, uh, so these are some of the examples, and they are all k -line. Now, in general, uh, turns out uh, we now know some geometries, even though we do not have the complete classification or how far away from it. So the, fir the ge from geometry side, Dertan and myself, uh, uh, a few years ago, we proved that the potential function for any non-compact shrinking soliton, the potential function has to behave in the leading term exactly like the Gaussian soliton from above and below. So the nice thing is that they are one quarter, like the Gaussian soliton, which is one over four uh, this, this x norm squared. And so this, uh, essentially says if you take the square root of f and multiply by 2, you get a distance-like function. So that is very convenient and nice. And uh, if uh, Paraman show that's the case if you assume Ricci is uh, bounded. And from that one, uh, we can deduce the volume behaviors. So the volume of any geodesic ball will be grow like, uh, at most, like Euclidean growth. 
and this is like so-called a bishop type. And more recently, uh, Ovidio Montino and uh, Jia Ping Wan show that you also have the volume growth from below, at least the linear. So these two, for people in remaining geometry, of course, are classical results analog to, uh, like analog to classical result bishop type, and this is Calabi Yao type for rich non-active. So these are, are kind of nice. Um, yeah. And so let's now move on to the classifications. So if we assume curvature to have certain uh, properties, uh, so this one in four dimension is analog of what Paraman showed. So Paraman essentially showed if curvature is bounded and non-active, then you have the classification. And uh, uh, here neighbor shows that in four dimension, you have uh, the similar results. Say if you have four dimensional, complete non-compact and non-flat shrinking soliton. So assume curvature, this is curvature operator, okay. Curvature operator is non-active and bonded, then you have only the cylinders. So, of course, Gaussian soliton is excluded because we look at non-compact. So, you have essentially S3 cross R, S2 cross R2, and take quotients. Uh, this uses a special case of four dimensions. Still, curvature operator is very special in a way. You know, for high dimensions, that is still open for dimension five or more. So it will be very interesting to try to at least uh, prove similar results for dimension five or more. So if we have graduate students here uh, in geometry interested in this, maybe you can try. Uh, okay. The other direction is the three dimension. We know the, uh, the VAR curvature is identically zero. So one generalization will be looking for higher dimensions, which is locally conformally flat. And several group of people worked on this. And uh, so listed here, yes, we, uh, uh, the Eminenti, Laneva, Montegata studied compact case, New Orleans uh, studied non-compact, and then complete by Zhu Hongzhan, and there's other proofs uh, so the final classification result says if we have a complete non-flat and uh, locally conformally flat one, shrinking soliton, then it will be like the only three types, uh, sphere, cylinder of uh, highest dimension, and then Gaussian soliton and take the finite quotient. So that is satisfactory if you assume by a curvature to be zero. Um, and uh, in, if you assume a more weaker conditions, uh, this is something called a Bach flat. And then uh, my PhD students, uh, Chan Chen and I, we just approved, uh, appeared this year uh, that uh, if you have a four dimensional, actually high dimension two, the bar flat, oops. Uh, then you would have only Einstein or locally conformally flat, which is the, the case. So I'll uh, say it's just one word about Bach tensor, which is probably less well known uh, in the general geometry community, but certainly is well known in people for study conformal geometry or general relativity. So that is the two derivative, taking one derivative, divergence is the cotton tensor, so bar tensor is taking two divergence of the var tensor. And uh, in four dimension, bar flat is critical points of the uh, L2 norm of the var curvature, and also, uh, if you have half conformally flat, that will imply bar flat. So that's the self-dual, anti-self-dual. Or if you're locally conformal to Einstein, it implies bar flat. And uh, the previous result was proved if you assume the half conformally flat by Xi Xiuqun and uh, his former student. Yeah, so now let's move on to the 
uh, third part. So I mentioned if we assume uh, certain curvature conditions, then we do have a nice classification. Um, so another direction, uh, as we hear in the audience, a lot of people study minimal surfaces or constant mean curvature, CMC surfaces, and the minimal surface, we certainly also look at the stable minimal surfaces. And uh, um, you have, uh, you're familiar with that. So here we're going to look at the variational structures. Um, so we start with the classical uh, Einstein Hilbert functional or Hilbert action, which is total scale curvature for people doing Yamabe problem. This is again well known. And uh, if we look at the, uh, this total scalar curvature, the, its critical points are rich flat matrix. But if we put a, a volume constraint equal to, say, a constant or one, then the critical points are exactly Einstein matrix. So Einstein matrix are critical points of the total scalar curvature functional subject to volume constraint equal to one. So here we have. Uh, uh, for Ricci solitons, we have Paraman defined something close to it. So here's the uh, Paraman's f functional. You look at the scalar curvature, and you look at the arbitrary function f, taking the gradient norm, and have a weight e to the minus f. So if f is equal to uh, zero, you go back to help the action. And uh, then he defines the lambda entropy which is taking the minimizing among all possible functions. So look at the functional f, which it depends on metric, which is fixed, and the arbitrary function f, and take a minimizing process. And turns out that the, this uh, minimizing process can be achieved, so actually can be achieved by certain particular functions, which are not necessarily unique. And then use the gradient steady solitons are exactly the critical points of this lambda entropy. So lambda depends only on the metric, becomes the lambda entropy. And that's a steady soroton. For shrinking soroton, you have to do a little bit more. And uh, here, the 4 pi tau minus n over 2 times e to the minus f is like a, a kind of like a heat kernel, uh, backward heat kernel. So if you look at the self uh, shrinkers of mean curvature flow, you know that's very similar to it. So that you have a functional defined, defined by Huiskin. And that is kind of like W functional. And then uh, Cody Minikazi defined a maximize process. Here is minimizing, so which is uh, similar to that is we take again, take a minimizing amount all possible F and the tau and in mean curvature shrinkers, you have a point and you have uh, a time. So you also uh, do a uh, minimizing or maximizing there. And again, this uh, new uh, functional is also attained by some pairs of particular functions, f and tau, satisfying certain equations. So anyway, that, uh, so this has become a met the function of metric only. And the first variation, if you compute the first variation of uh, this uh, new functional, then you can see that uh, the Euler-Lagrange equation are exactly the shrinking Ricci solitons. So the shrinking Ricci soliton appear as the critical points of uh, Paraman's new functional. And here tau is positive. So that's why this is shrinking solitons. And uh, Paramount observed you have monotone quantity, that this new entropy is actually monotone increasing under the Ricci flow. So you have monotonicity formula, which played the important role. So naturally, we would like to look at the second variations. So the second variation, uh, Back in 2004, Hamilton and Tom Yoneman, we look at the second variation, and uh, by direct computations, uh, lengthy, but you know, uh, you have uh, this Jacobi operator, stability operator. 
So the variation, of course, is in the tangent space of metrics, which are symmetric two tensors. So this operator acting on symmetric two tensors start with uh, Laplace, and then you have the curvature operator acting on it, which yeah, again you get uh, a symmetric two tensor by this way. Okay, and then you have the divergence and divergence dual uh, uh, adjoint and you have some other quantities. So this one you have to solve equations. So it actually it's a differential integral operator. And that is, this one is different from if you study Hilbert actions. You don't have such terms. And then you have uh, the last one is the trace of G uh, of the H in proportion to metric. So this is complicated looking operator. But uh, if you study Einstein metrics and the stability, these uh, look a bit similar. Now, for a symmetric two tensor, the space, uh, the divergence is the elliptic operator. So you have this natural decomposition into the kernel of divergence and plus image of divergence uh, adjoint, infinite dimensional linear algebra. And here, divergence is just uh, the usual taking the uh, taking uh, in in local coordinates defined this way, and the divergence the adjoint turns out is just essentially the d derivative of the metric, and this is the vector field corresponds to the one form omega. So that's uh, a general decomposition, and if you have Einstein metrics then you can make it to be more, uh, better, finer decomposition. And here is the image divergence of star like here. And then this will be conformal deformations. So conformal directions plus the uh, kernel of divergence and kernel of trace. So this is the so-called transverse traceless directions. Yeah. Uh, Okay, and that is the, so this is operator. Let's see, so this is the operator. So if the divergence is zero, then this term drops, and that term also drops due to uh, Lichnowitz uh, eigenvalue estimate. And if a trace is zero, this term drops. So in the traceless transverse directions, you have first two terms. Yeah. And you can read off these decompositions the following. The first one is due to diffeomorphism invariance is always equal to zero. So the diffeomorphism invariance, we saw it's a lead derivative. So first one, uh, first component, the, it's in the null space of the stability operator. And the third part is just we said only two terms left. And if we are in Einstein case, so if we look at the Einstein, which is special, Ricci soliton then uh, this essentially depends on the eigenvalues of so-called the rich knowledge Laplace, which is uh, the operator uh, of appears in the stability of Einstein metrics. And so it depends on this eigenvalue. And what's in the conformal direction uh, turns out is very different from the Einstein case. In Einstein case, any conformal deformation is always unstable just a conformal direction. So, so the hope is only study this part. But for Einstein, for the Perelman's new functional, what I said Einstein is for the Hilbert action, uh, that's always unstable. So in the, this case, uh, if you have unstable direction, if only if the first eigenvalue on, of Laplace on functions has this estimate. So if the first eigenvalue is bigger than or equal to twice of an Einstein constant, then it is stable in the conformal directions. So that's, uh, that's the difference. So again, I restate that uh, if we have a, a positive Einstein manifold and with respect to Perelman's new entropy um, is stable if only if you have the two eigenvalues have the right the right estimate, yeah. 
Okay, maybe I have a, couple, a few minutes, two or three minutes left. So I'll uh, say, uh, so back in 2004, uh, we look at the, find a few things are stable. For example, spheres, of course, is strictly stable. And uh, complex projective space are stable, but they have some zero directions. And the product of any Einstein manifold will be unstable. So if you take any two Einstein manifold with same Einstein constant, that's unstable. And if you look at any Kähler Einstein manifold with positive uh, scalar curvature, then if the so-called Hodge number is bigger than or equal to two, that means besides scalar form, you have another one there, then that gives you unstable directions due to a uh, Weizenbach formula. You have to, you can use the, is unstable. And the hypochordric, so to speak, hypersurfaces uh, in uh, CPN, uh, is unstable in three complex three dimension, but stable in complex four dimension. So we were a little puzzled by then. Now, just this year, oops, uh, Chen Shi He, a former post of I, uh, mine, and we uh, look at the all the irreducible symmetric space of compact type. And uh, by studying the two eigenvalues, Lichnovich and uh, functions, that uh, we, uh, we have a list of uh, whether they are stable or not, have complete classification. So here's a list for dimension less than 10 or equal to 10. So you have a few stable ones, including projective space. And uh, this is the, uh, the hypochordric four dimension and et cetera, and there's some unstable ones. This one is the hypochordric of complex three dimension. Uh, and turns out, interesting enough, that uh, there's one strictly stable. And uh, later we learn that this symmetric space is moduli space of some called a co-associative uh, in G2 manifold. So this may be special. Uh, in, initially, we were very puzzled why uh, we didn't expect, uh, besides the sphere, there's something strictly stable. So, um, so maybe this is interesting. And uh, I should uh, uh, I'll not talk about the shrinking solitons. It's just uh, similar, but you have to, uh, using the weight function, e to the f. So you have a similar operators. Uh, so maybe it turns out uh, that the two non-examples, CP2 brought one or two points are also unstable. And uh, so here are two uh, main problems about com uh, stability. One, for example, start four dimension, and you could ask for high dimensions. What are stable and compact uh, Einstein manifolds? In four dimension, besides S4 and CP2, are there any other? The conjecture is no, that the only one should be S4 and CP2. And conjecture two, which are kind of made up uh, because by seeing examples, that uh, if you have a non-Einstein shrinker, probably they shouldn't be stable. But these are all open problems. And finally, show you examples in four dimension. Uh, these are the non-examples. Of course, we don't have a classification about the four-dimensional Einstein manifold either. Uh, so at least sphere, this is strictly stable, CP2. We saw it's uh, stable, but you have some zero direction. The Einstein product, S2 cross S2, is unstable. And all the uh, two, the two the Ricci soliton are unstable, and uh, the Einstein ones for blow up three to eight points, those are unstable because H11 is equal to, equal to K exactly, so that these are all unstable. So at least from the non-list, that is the case. And uh, so we are still uh, puzzled and try to figure out uh, the, these two conjectures. So. Uh, and um, unlike the mean curvature cell shrinker, the stable ones are all classified.
So here, uh, we, we have to struggle a bit more. So hopefully, uh, in your future, uh, we know more about this. So thank you. Obrigado. <laughs>